In this video, I'll give proofs for the two special trig limits. And I'll also prove that the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is minus sine. To prove that the limit of sine theta over theta is 1 as theta goes to 0, I'm going to start with a picture. In this picture, I have a unit circle, a circle of radius 1, and I have two right triangles, a green triangle and a smaller red triangle, both with angle theta. Now I'm going to argue in terms of areas. If I want to compute the area of this sector that I've shaded in blue here, in other words, that pie-shaped piece, I can first compute the area of the circle, which is pi times 1 squared for the radius. But since the sector has angle theta and the full circle has angle 2 pi, I need to multiply that area of the circle by the ratio theta over 2 pi to represent the fraction of the area of the circle that's included in this sector. So in other words, the area of the sector is just going to be theta over 2, where theta is given in radians. Now if I want to compute the area of the little red triangle, I can do 1 half times the base times the height. Now the base is going to be equal to cosine theta, because I have a circle of radius 1 and angle theta here. And the height is going to be sine theta. Finally, the area of the green triangle is also 1 half times the base times the height, but now the base is a full 1 unit and the height is given by tangent theta, since opposite, which is the height here, over adjacent, which is 1, has to equal tangent theta. Now, if I put all those areas together, I know that the area of the red triangle, I'll write it as cosine theta sine theta over 2, has to be less than or equal to the area of the blue sector, theta over 2, which is less than or equal to the area of the big green triangle, which is tan theta over 2. Now I'm going to multiply through this inequality by 2 and rewrite things in terms of sine and cosine to get cosine theta sine theta is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to sine theta over cosine theta. Now I'm going to divide through my inequalities by sine theta, which won't change the inequalities as long as theta is greater than 0 so that sine theta is positive. And I get cosine theta is less than or equal to theta over sine theta is less than or equal to 1 over cosine theta. Now this middle expression is the reciprocal of the expression I want to take the limit of. So I'm going to go ahead and take limits. And since the limits of the two expressions on the outside both exist and equal 1, by the sandwich theorem, the limit of the expression on the inside has to exist and equal 1 as well. Now I've cheated a little bit here and I've really just taken the limit from the right because I've assumed that theta is greater than 0. But you can check that if you use theta less than 0, so that sine theta is negative, the limit from the left will also equal 1. The inequalities will flip around first, but you'll still get use the sandwich theorem to get a limit of 1. And that's a cool geometric proof of this useful limit from calculus. To show that the limit of cosine theta minus 1 over theta is 0, we can actually rewrite this expression and reuse the limit that we just computed. So let me write down my limit. And I'm going to multiply this expression by cosine theta plus 1 on the numerator and the denominator. So I haven't changed the expression. I've just multiplied it by 1. Now if I multiply my numerator out, I get cosine squared theta minus 1. And from the trig identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, I know that cosine squared theta minus 1 has to equal minus sine squared. So I can rewrite my limit as the limit of minus sine squared theta over theta cosine theta plus 1. And now I can 
regroup to write my sine theta over theta and my other copy of sine theta over cosine theta plus 1. The limit of the first expression is going to be negative 1 because of the limit we just proved. And the limit of the second expression is just 0 over 1 plus 1, or 0. And therefore, my entire limit is just going to be negative 1 times 0, or 0, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. Now we can use these two limits that we've just proved to calculate the derivatives of sine and cosine using the limit definition of derivative and prove the results that we stated previously. According to the limit definition of derivative, the derivative of sine x is the limit, as h goes to 0, of sine of x plus h minus sine of x divided by h. As usual, this is a 0 over 0 indeterminate form limit, so I'm going to need to rewrite things to evaluate it. And I'm going to rewrite using the angle sum formula for sine. The sine of x plus h is equal to sine x cosine h cosine plus cosine x sine h. Now if I rearrange things and factor out a sine x from the first term, I can break up my limit into pieces and compute every piece. So this is sine x times 0 plus cosine x times 1. And so my final answer is cosine x as we want it. The proof that the derivative of cosine is minus sine is very similar. So please stop the video and try it for yourself before proceeding. Using the limit definition of derivative, we have that the derivative of cosine of x is the limit, as h goes to 0, of cosine of x plus h minus cosine of x over h. We can rewrite the cosine of x plus h using the angle sum formula as the cosine of x times the cosine of h minus the sine of x times the sine of h and then we still have the minus cosine of x over h. As before, we're going to regroup things. And factoring out the cosine x from the first part, the same familiar limits just put together in different ways. So here, cosine of x as h goes to 0 is just cosine of x. This limit we know is 0. Sine of x is just staying sine of x. And sine of h over h is going to 1 which means that our final answer is going to be negative sine of x times 1, or just negative sine of x, which is exactly what we wanted. That's all for the proofs of these four useful calculus facts.